Hello, you are listening to the OmniTalk Fast Five, brought to you in partnership with the AM Consumer and Retail Group, Firework, Trigo, Sezzle, and Silk. Headline number one, Chris, according to a memo obtained by the Wall Street Journal, Walmart plans to close three of its 11 U.S. technology hubs and require hundreds of workers to relocate to keep their jobs. Walmart plans to close offices in Austin, Texas, Carlsbad, California, and Portland, Oregon. Uh, yes, they have that Who many. Who knew? That many tech Carlsbad hubs. showing up. Uh, Walmart says that it will pay for workers in those locations to transfer to other primary offices, such as San Bruno, California, or the company's headquarters in Bentonville, Arkansas, should they desire to do so. In addition, the Wall Street Journal is also reporting that Suresh Kumar, Walmart's chief technology officer, also said in the memo that most of Walmart's global technology workers will need to be in their assigned office at least two days a week. End quote. Uh, Chad, we're going to go to you first on this one. I have to know, like, what do you think is the bigger part of this headline? Walmart closing eleven, some of 11 of their tech hub offices or that Walmart is requiring tech workers to be in the office two days a week? So uh, for me, this is like a layoff announcement. It's not technically a layoff announcement, mm, huh. but it's a layoff announcement. Right. right? So closing offices, forced relocations, like there's clearly an expectation of a reduced workforce. Hmm. So for me, I think the bigger part kind of goes back and, and, you know, let me focus a minute on kind of this being another domino drop because it is centered on Walmart's tech centers around what's happening in the broader tech sector. Sure. Right. Um, but I say that, uh, and and at the risk of sounding insensitive, which is not my intention at all here, I think the re the recent layoff news in tech is far overhyped. Um, mm -hmm. So, actually, I can't take credit for this, right? So Scott Galloway actually put out an article within the last week that puts numbers to this. Mm -hmm. So some of the tech companies that are gathering the layoff headlines. I'm gonna read, mm -hmm. read a couple off here. So. Meta has announced 11,000 layoffs. Yep. They added 42,000 headcount during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. right. uh, Google reduced 12,000. They were they had added 68,000. Microsoft down 10,000. They were up 77,000. And Amazon, trouble at Amazon because they laid off 18,000. They had added 746,000 headcount during the pandemic. Dang. So I, the question for me Chad's is like- it again. Mm -hmm. You know, since since they're reducing a fraction of what they added, like where are these companies now pulling back? Mm -hmm. So, you know, you think about this kind of pandemic environment, right? Kind of free cash environment, uncertain future. You know, my bet is they were experimentation rich. Um, and in yep. this environment, there's pullback on those experiments, which they found mm -hmm. that aren't moving the needle. Mm -hmm. So Perhaps acting a little bit more like a traditional company means calling time of death on some experiments a little sooner and sure. not delving into as many crazy adjacencies. And so this is not the death of the tech sector. And me, Walmart's participation announcement here is no different and it follows suit. I, I love that. Uh, Joanna, yeah. I, what do you think about this? And especially I think, you know, I think there's this idea of return to work is a hot topic for a lot of, of people, not just in the retail industry, but um, in the tech sectors and other sectors as well. But what are you advising clients to do? I imagine you have clients who are asking you these types of things, maybe, maybe not, but what are your thoughts here as it relates to this Walmart story? Yeah, I think a lot of our, our clients, certainly in the in the retail space, are, are wrestling with it. And they've been trying different models, right? Hybrid, but then hybrid by self-selection versus by mandate. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, you know, what is the right balance if I'm going to ask uh, associates of mine to be in the office? How many days? Does right. it vary by function? You know, there are a lot mm -hmm. of variables here. And so yeah. I think what the pandemic taught a lot of us is that um, there are definitely functions that can be equally productive regardless of location. Right. And so I think what our clients are really trying to address is, you know, accommodating those functions in a way that's cost effective. Right. Um, and if that means they need less space because those team members can be remote and without a productivity loss and, and all that, then, then that makes a lot of sense. And as we start reining in costs, um, that is that is a helpful line item. The idea that we're going to then mandate people, and a lot of organizations have been mandating five days a week, four days a week, um, you know, it feels a little arbitrary if it's a blanket and mm -hmm. not you know, functionally specific requirement um, mm -hmm. from, from our perspective. 
Yeah. I think that that makes a lot of sense, especially when you think, you know, probably doesn't seem fair mm -hmm. to some of the employees if, or, and I think it's important to point out that, you know, it doesn't make sense to make a mandate across the entire company that people are going to all be in there. But Chris, what are your thoughts here? I mean, you ran teams at target, like how yeah. do you feel about in-person versus work from home hybrid and yeah. this Walmart story? I think there's two sides of the story. And I agree with what both Chad and Joanna said. I mean, I think to me, the, 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 the stark thing for me, first of all, was 11 tech hubs in the U S is too many. Yeah. Like you don't need one in Carlsbad. You don't need one in Portland. When you already have one in San Bruno, you probably have a decent one in Bentonville. You probably have one, I'm guessing, down in Texas too. Since and that's seemingly open. I don't know for sure, but you know, whatever. Yeah. The the more important part to me is is the is the forced back to work two days a week. I would have held on that move mm -hmm. because you're not getting economies of scale in the layoff. Like, you know, by shrinking, but the workforce being so remote now, you take them out of the equation. Like yeah. you're not necessarily needing those people to relocate. Right. And you're also going to probably lead to more more turnover down the line from your other employees at those existing still remaining eight tech hubs. Mm -hmm. So that's the part of this that I don't quite understand. But Chad, what do you think? Yeah. So building on the whole work from home or office piece, I, I agree with what with, with you guys are saying. I, I think the environment that you create in the office matters a lot. So force mm -hmm. mandates around days and physical time just for everyone to go behind their glass office doors and right, sit right. and, you know, kind of work independently doesn't really make a difference or the other way with these kind of like forced open collaborative areas where you're forcing people to work independently around each other. And then you're just talking over each other on our calls. Like, how do you make the time in office actually productive? Because I think mm -hmm. we have seen through the pandemic that yes, we can operate independently we also are better together, mm -hmm. but kind of fit for purpose. And the other side of it is that, um, you know, it's real, it, it's easier to maintain relationships that you already had in a remote, remote environment, but it's really hard to build new ones. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to build trust and new working relationships. And we see that across clients of ours that are fragmented or especially around like new executive teams mm -hmm. that are scattered across the country that have never taken the time to actually be live in person and, you know, create, if you're going to be in office, do it fit for purpose and, uh, you know, kind of in the right way that makes you more productive. Great. Yeah. And I think that makes sense too, when you start to think about consolidating the hubs, like it makes more sense to have like in-person like whiteboard sessions or strategy or planning sessions too. Once, you know, yeah. once you, you have fewer places to be doing right. those in than 11. Right. Right.